This is going to be a study on why Christians shouldn't celebrate Halloween. If you aren't a Christian, then the first thing you should be worried about is your salvation. Your soul is going to spend eternity somewhere. You're going to spend eternity in hell if you're not saved and without the Lord Jesus Christ. But the first reason Christians shouldn't celebrate Halloween is because it glorifies death. Hebrews 2 and verse 14 says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. One of the popular things on Halloween is zombies. They have become popular all year round with shows like The Walking Dead, but on Halloween you can go to the store and see zombies on food products and on posters and people dress up like zombies and they are celebrating death. The Bible says if you are a Christian then you have passed from death unto life. John 5.24 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. 1 John 3.14 says, We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. God is the opposite of death. When Jesus was alive and walking around, no one ever died around him. And if someone died, they wouldn't stay dead. He brought Lazarus back from the dead, and when Jesus Christ resurrected, many of the saints which slept arose, slept as in they were dead. Matthew 27, 52 says, And the graves were opened, and many of the bodies of the saints which slept arose. The people coming back from the dead were the good guys. At the rapture we will meet the Lord Jesus Christ in the air, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So the reason the devil makes all these zombie movies is because most of the people who come back from the dead in the Bible are the good guys. He likes to make the good look evil, and he likes to make the evil seem as good. But death is glorified on Halloween, and that is why so many horror movies about killing are released around this time. For the longest time, it was the Saw series where people get tortured. And all of these horror movies where death is glorified, they release them because people will watch them more on Halloween. I've heard people ask others what they are going to do for Halloween this year. And they say, we aren't going to do anything. We're just going to go home and watch some scary movies. People put unclean things before their eyes on Halloween. And it is mostly torture, killing, death, blood, and gore. Death is glorified on Halloween. The Lord Samhain who the Druids worshipped, is the Lord of Death. And this would obviously be Satan, who, was the, who has the power of death. The roots of Halloween are traced back to the Druids and Samhain. Samhain would probably be where you get what people know as the Grim Reaper. No doubt Halloween is a very dark and satanic time of the year. The Bible lets us know that devil-possessed people are obsessed with death. Mark 5.5 5 says the devil possessed man was always in the mountains and in the tombs. But Christians should be against Halloween because of its glorification of death. Even the decorations for Halloween are skulls, skeletons, caskets. And if you go into a haunted house, you will see fake dead bodies. It is a time of fear and a time of death. The second reason Christians shouldn't celebrate Halloween is because of the appearance of evil. 1 Thessalonians 5.22 says, Abstain from all appearance of evil. The verse shouldn't say not to do evil, but to stay away from the appearance of evil. So it shouldn't even appear to someone that you are doing something evil. On Halloween, people dress up and they go get candy, and most likely their motive isn't wrong. They aren't in some cult or going to kill anyone or sacrifice anyone. But what are you dressing up as witches, wizards, zombies, vampires, Satan, whores, and so on and so forth? So many whores will use Halloween as an excuse to dress up even more like a whore than they do all year round. I'm sure a lot of the women who dress up like this on Halloween probably aren't whores, but how does it appear? 
1 Thessalonians 5.22 says, Abstain from all appearance of evil. The Bible talks about women who dress like this in Proverbs 7.10, and it says, And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot. The attire of an harlot is what a lot of these women wear on Halloween. Proverbs 7.25-27 through 27 says, Let not thine heart decline to her ways, go not astray in her paths. For she hath cast down many wounded, yea, yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. How about that, it says, going down to the chambers of death, and Halloween glorifies death. You are going against God when you dress up as something that he clearly is against. He is against women dressing up like harlots. And Jesus says this in Matthew 5.28, But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Notice it says with her, showing she could have had something to do with him lusting. When you dress up like a whore, you make it easier for a man to lust after you. You may not be a whore, but when you dress up as one, you appear as one. The kind of sinful, unsaved women who dress like harlots may look good and, and attractive on the outside, but if it were possible to have super spiritual eyes to really see them like God sees them, you would see them something like the crypt keeper. They are dead inside. They are dead in trespasses and sins. Christian men shouldn't go after unsaved women. You shouldn't yoke up with unbelievers, and you shouldn't get with Christians who act like unbelievers. What else do people dress up as on Halloween? Witches. Women love to see, or women love to dress up like witches. God has never liked witches. He won't ever like witches. And in the Old Testament, he was so against them that they were commanded to kill them under the law. Exodus twenty two eighteen says, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Why in the world would a Christian woman want to dress up as something that God is so against? Do you think God is okay with you walking around dressed up like a witch? Obviously, most people know you aren't casting spells and doing witch stuff when you dress up as one on Halloween, but what evil are you giving the appearance of? You're giving the appearance that you're okay with it. Nowadays, being a witch is popular because of Harry Potter, so some people may think you really are a witch, depending on what state you live in like if you live in salem massachusetts or something but you dress up like a witch and you're in rebellion against god and if you are rebelling against god then you are a witch first samuel fifteen twenty three: for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft the bible says witchcraft provokes the lord to anger do you not fear god you say well i'm not doing witchcraft yeah but you're dressing up like someone who does and you're dressing up like someone who makes God angry do you not fear God second chronicles 33 6 says and he caused his children to pass through the fire and the valley of the son of Hinnom also he observed times and used enchantments and used witchcraft and dealt with a familiar spirit and with wizards he wrought much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. You say that I'm just giving Old Testament scripture. But here also is New Testament. Galatians 5:19 through 20 Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, and cleanness, lasciviousness, adultery, witchcraft. Deuteronomy 18.10 There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch. You find thousands of people dressed up like witches on Halloween, and then thousands more watching Hocus Pocus every Halloween. You're being entertained by witches. You're being entertained by devils. You say, I'm just being overboard. No, I just try my best to like what God likes and hate what God hates. It's not fun being against things that are popular because everyone gets mad at you and hates you. But like Paul said, am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? What else do people dress up as? They dress up as vampires. Obviously people know you aren't a real vampire. 
but it appears like you like vampires, and it's evil to like vampires. The Bible says to stay away from the appearance of evil. God lets us know what he thinks about blood suckers in the Bible. You weren't supposed to drink blood before the law, under the law, or under under grace. Genesis 9-4, before the law, it says, But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. And under the law, in Leviticus 17-12, Therefore I said unto the children of Israel, No soul of you shall eat blood, neither shall any stranger that sojourneth among you eat blood. And under grace, Acts 15.29, that ye abstain from meats offered to idols, and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication, from which, if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well, fare ye well. But people love vampires, and are in love with vampires. That's why they make movies with a vampire fornicating with a woman like Twilight and Vampire Diaries. And God don't like that stuff. You're doing wrong by watching it, and you need to confess your sin and get back in fellowship if you've been watching it. People even dress up as Satan on Halloween, and that would be the appearance of evil by far. Satan is the first to sin. He rebelled against God and wanted to take his place. He wants to take you to hell. Why would you want to dress up as someone that wants to kill you? Satan desires to have you that he can kill you. Luke twenty two thirty one says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. First Peter 5, 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. It blows my mind how Christians see it as okay to dress up as the devil. The devil hates me, and I hate him. I can't even stand to eat deviled ham, because it has his picture on the front of it. Since I got saved, I don't even like to root for sports teams like the New Jersey Devils, or the Blue Devils, or the team with the Demon Deacon mascot. But no Christian should be dressing up as a witch, vampire, devil, harlot, or any other evil person. The Bible says abstain from all appearance of evil. And you say, well, what about superheroes? You see tons of young kids dressing up as superheroes who are portrayed as gods. Superheroes are nothing but counterfeits for glorified bodies that believers will get at the rapture. In Joe chapter 2, it talks about us coming back with the Lord Jesus Christ at the second coming. And it says we will be able to fall on swords and not be wounded and climb the walls like men of war. We will be able to walk through walls, go invisible and visible at will. The Bible also talks about Jesus and his glorified body going through walls. And even while he was here, he knew people's thoughts. When we get our glorified bodies, we will be like him. We will have telepathy and telekinesis. All of these false superhero gods will copy these powers taken straight out of a King James Bible. And these powers are the powers we will get in our glorified bodies. And what about men dressing up as women on Halloween? Deuteronomy 22.5 says, The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. I know that men wore skirts in Bible times, and I know a lot of people will take this verse and use it to say, Women shouldn't wear pants. And things like that, which I don't do that since men wore skirts in the Bible, so you really can't take that verse and say that they're wearing men's clothes and all that. But I believe we can get some instruction in righteousness from this verse and use this verse to show that God doesn't want men dressing up to make themselves look like a woman. I don't know if Bruce Jenner used to use Halloween as an opportunity to show his true self, but I'm sure there are a bunch of closet trannies who love Halloween for this reason. Men shouldn't dress up as women on Halloween for the simple fact it makes them look like a sodomite. It's unnatural and weird and God hates it. People's minds get warped around this time even more so than they regularly are. I remember growing up I wanted to dress up as the white or green Power Ranger. Now little boys want to dress up as Kimberly the Pink Ranger. Did you ever hear the phrase, stand up and be a man? 
it meant to be brave and fearless. But now a guy who couldn't hack it as a man dresses up like someone's mother and gets an award for being courageous. But the next reason I'm against Halloween is because it brings the wrong kind of fear. When you go to bed at night, you shouldn't feel like you have to look in your closet and under your bed and out of the window and the tree. Matthew 10.28 says, Fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. You should fear God. But Halloween and horror movies make you fear and worry about stuff that isn't even there. Shows like Ghost Hunters and Paranormal Activity make people scared to go to sleep. The devil has tried to, to ruin the word ghost. When people think of the word ghost, they think of something scary. And the only time they think of it as good is if it is Casper or Patrick Swayze or something. But the Bible calls the third member of the Godhead the Holy Ghost. The devil hates the Godhead. And that's why he tries to get rid of it in all the new Bibles. 1 John 5, 7 says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. But people are afraid of ghosts. They think every sound at night is a ghost in the kitchen. And around Halloween, people sit around and watch scary stuff and look at devils and zombies and witches, and your mind gets warped from seeing all that stuff. Philippians 4, 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are pr true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. You can't think about that stuff watching things like I Know What You Did Last Summer, and Chucky, and Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and the Ouija Board movie. Even Ouija Boards are the devil's counterfeit for something that God had. The Urim and Thummim in the Old Testament was like God's glorified Ouija board. People way back in the Old Testament consulted with the Urim and Thummim to get divine answers from God. The light of the stones lit up to spell out an answer from God, but the Urim and the Thummim were not man-made like a Ouija board. The Urim and Thummim were put in the breastplate on the high priest. They could ask it stuff and it would spell out the answer. They were consulting God, and this wasn't condemned by God, but using a Ouija board is. Because you are consulting familiar spirits. Deuteronomy 18.11-12 through 12 says, Or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. If you're using a Ouija board, then that is divination and necromancy. You're trying to foretell the future. And by talking to a spirit, you're trying to tell a future. And you're conjuring up demons, or what the Bible calls devils, when you use them. But Christians shouldn't celebrate Halloween because it brings the wrong kind of fear. You should fear God. Some people say you shouldn't even enter the door if a trick-or-treater comes to your house. I've listened to preachers who say you should lock the doors and pretend like you're not home, but I don't see anything wrong with opening the door and giving them a track and witnessing to them. You go to their house and knock on their door to give them the gospel, so why can't you give them the gospel when they come to your house? Only difference is they use their gas to get to your house. Trick-or-treating is the devil's counterfeit for door-to-door soul winning. When you go trick-or-treating, you're going to get something from someone. When you go door-to-door -door witnessing, you're going to give somebody something. I don't believe it is a sin to give anyone candy or to take candy, but I don't want to participate and go trick-or-treating. I don't want to go too far extreme one way and say you're sinning if you eat candy on Halloween Day. Well, I don't go too far the other way and say it's okay to go trick-or-treating and dress up like devils and witches. It's not okay to participate in Halloween. We should be separate as Christians. 2 Corinthians 6.17 says, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. The next reason I'm against Halloween is because of the spirit of Halloween. 
The Bible talks about people being possessed with unclean and evil spirits, and divination is a popular thing on Halloween, and the Bible even talks about this spirit, the spirit of divination. Acts 16.16 16 says, And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by sooth saying. There are spirits at work on Halloween, and these spirits can get in you if you participate in a lot of this stuff that goes on. These same spirits are so vile and nasty that they would make a pig commit suicide as they did in Mark chapter 5. I'm going to give you a little history on Halloween began, but I believe this is the least of the reasons why you shouldn't celebrate Halloween. Halloween isn't just so bad because of how it started. It's bad because of how it is present how it presently is and the time that we're living in now. If this history wasn't true, you can see you shouldn't celebrate Halloween just from the verses I've already given you. But here is a little bit of history on Halloween how Halloween started. The Druids celebrated Samhain. Samhain occurred on November 1st and signified the death of summer. Samhain, a night celebrating death and hell, was the Druids' most important ritual. It was a terrifying night of human sacrifices, and it was the original Halloween. And here is what people used to believe on Halloween. On All Hallows' Eve, the veil between the world of the living and the world of the dead was thin. It allowed the souls of the dead to come back to earth and walk among the living. People would leave out food and candies for the dead in the hope that the evil spirits would leave them alone. They would also carve out turnips and place embers in them to ward off the evil spirits. The glowing, This glowing predecessor to the pumpkin jack-o'-lantern would keep the souls of the dead away. The Druids are also said to have put severed human heads in front of their houses and temples with candles inside of them. On this night, people would dress up as devils, ghosts, evil spirits, or other evil things because they thought that the real evil, evil spirits would think that they were evil spirits too, and that, that would scare them away. While it is said that others thought masks invited the evil spirits in, and bonfires or bone fires even go way back. The sacred fires were believed to have the power to scare away the evil spirits, and people stayed close by them, often wearing costumes of animal heads and skins as disguises to frighten those spirits and ensure their safety. But First John 4, 1 says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God because many false prophets are gone out into the world. We should always try to figure out what spirit is behind something. Ever heard someone talk about getting into the spirit of Halloween? One thing for sure, it isn't the Holy Spirit of God. When you let your kids get in the spirit of Halloween, they dress up as things that are abominable to God, and then they grow up and Halloween turns into a time of partying, drinking, and dancing, which leads to fornication. It is a devilish spirit behind Halloween. The name itself screams blasphemy. Have you ever heard the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6, 9, which says, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. This title belongs to God, not to a day that celebrates death. This is no shocker that Satan put it into the hearts of people to call it Halloween. Satan said in Isaiah fourteen twelve, I will be like the Most High. And Satan tries to copy and counterfeit everything God has and does. This day is held in high regard by people who are full of unclean spirits. Anton LaVey, the pastor of the Church of Satan and author of the Satanic Bible, said that other than one's own birthday, Halloween is the major holiday. Did you know bats and owls and ravens represent unclean spirits? You see these Two birds commonly in movies and things on Halloween. Revelation 18.2 says, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Where do you think you get the name for the game Angry Birds? 
Devils are angry and they want to take you with them to hell. Isaiah chapter 34 verses 8 through 11. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion and the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch and the dust thereof into brimstone. And the land thereof shall become burning pitch, and it shall not be quenched night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever from generation to generation. It shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. But the cormorant and the bittern shall possess it. The owl also and the raven shall dwell in it. And he shall stretch out upon it the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness. So you can see the unclean birds represent unclean spirits. And you see ravens and owls and horror movies and on decorations during Halloween. Every, everything you can see in this world represents something you can't see. What kind of spirit is in a person that puts razor blades in candy? What kind of spirit is in people who put poison in candy to kill somebody? It is an unclean spirit. In Matthew seven eleven, the Bible calls people evil. And people seem to be more evil on Halloween because they van they're vandalizing, drinking, fornicating, partying. The spirit behind it is a big part of why they do all this stuff. This is what the book of Mark says about the devil possessed man in Mark chapter 5 and verse 4. Because that he had often been bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. No man, no one could tame him. He was reckless and didn't care what he did or who he hurt, even if he hurt himself. People do horrible and mean things on Halloween that they would never do any other day. A spirit is really at work on Halloween. Some of the things people do during this day go beyond just fleshy sins. And what about the sodomite parades that took place on Halloween and led to the sodomite explosion that we have now? The Bible also calls this an abomination. In Leviticus 18.22 it says, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. I'm not like these guys going around saying the government needs to kill sodomites and that sodomites can't be saved. If I meet any sodomite, I pray for them. I don't want them to die and go to hell. They can be saved, and if they will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, they can be saved and have eternal life. But the Bible says it is an abomination for man to lie with man. Look up the connection between Halloween and homosexuality. Actually, don't do that. You don't know what might pop up on Google or something. But Halloween has always been a time of sex perversion, and the next reason I'm against Halloween is because it blurs the line. It blurs the line between good and evil. You let your little girl dress up like Maleficent and she is going to think being a rebellious witch is just perfectly normal. I didn't realize how disturbing Halloween costumes were until after I got saved and started reading the Bible. People have stayed away from the Bible so much that they are desensitized. Disney and Halloween are used by Satan to blur the line between good and evil. There ain't no such thing as good magic and good witches. There ain't no such thing as a good vampire. Movies that Disney come out with just lie to your kids and desensitize them. In schools everywhere, teachers are putting scary movies in front of a class full of kids and celebrating Halloween with them right in the classrooms. Some people say you can't just shelter the kids you got to let them get out there. So you're just supposed to let the devil play with the kid a little bit is basically what they're saying. And that's a dumb idea. Your kid is going to see plenty of evil stuff when he leaves your house. You don't have to let him see it while he's there at your house. And you don't have to let him participate in wicked stuff while he's on your time. All because you don't want him to be too sheltered as they say. If you blur the line between good and evil, they will end up calling evil good and good evil. Bible-believing Christians are now labeled as evil and hateful if they preach against sin, while a tranny is seen as good and wins awards for being courageous. That's backwards. I'm against Halloween for many reasons. 
and you should be too if you are a Bible-believing Christian. I don't go too far extreme and say you are wicked if you open the door to trick-or-treaters and give them candy and attract. Nothing is wrong with eating candy other than it will make you fat if you eat it too much. You can't go too far extreme either way and say someone is of the devil for eating candy and doing something that you wouldn't do yourself. You just got to have some sense. But as you can see, Halloween goes completely against the Bible and Deuteronomy 18.10, There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch. When the Bible says, pass through the fire, this is talking about child sacrifice. Child sacrifice has always happened on Halloween, and even still does today. And when the verse said, or that useth divination, divination is trying to get knowledge of the future by supernatural means. Even bobbing for apples, which a lot of people do on Halloween, was used for divination before. People do this all the time on Halloween. I'm not saying it's bad now, I'm just giving you some history about it. And this verse also said, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch. Halloween is the witch's high day. It is their favorite day of the year. People dress up like witches on this day and put pictures and statues and decorations of witches in their, in their yard. And Deuteronomy 18.11 says, Or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard. Millions will watch Harry Potter this Halloween. And it says, Or a necromancer. This is trying to predict the future by talking to the dead. This happens every year when people are using Ouija, Ouija boards at parties. And Deuteronomy 18.12, For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. Because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. If you're a Christian, you need to realize that there are some things you should stay away from. And stay away from the appearance of evil. If you have a bunch of occult things and things pertaining to witchcraft, divination, Halloween, and other wicked things, then you should do like the people did in Acts 19 and verse 19 and burn them. It says, Many of them also which used curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. This is the only way God can be first in your life, life is if you get rid of the wicked stuff and seek Him and His word. Look what happened after they burned their junk. It said in Acts 19.20, So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. But if you're not saved, you shouldn't be worrying about Halloween. You need to worry about your eternal soul first. Hebrews 9.27 says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. You're going to die one day, and your soul will go to heaven or hell. If God let his son die on the cross for your sins, then he will definitely let you burn in hell for rejecting his son. God is offering the free gift of salvation to you if you will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain, for I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. If you want to be saved, then realize your own self-righteousness can't save you, and come to the Lord Jesus Christ, and rely on Him and His shed blood to save your soul from hell. He died to take your place. He became sin for us, even though He never sinned. Second Corinthians 5.21 For He hath made Him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. But God commendeth His love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, there is none righteous, no, not one. If you come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner and believe on Him, putting your trust on Him to get you to heaven, then you can be saved and have eternal life. Jesus said, I am the way, 
the truth and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me.